Hi there, Dr. Jason Van Horn, professor of geography at Calvin University here. Many geographers have written about the use of building footprints to help in disaster risk assessment and response, but what do we do if our data source doesn't have that information? Well, let me show you a deep learning AI tool in ArcGIS Pro that potentially can help us with the extraction of building footprints from imagery like this. Here you see my Maxar data, and that's what we're going to use, the Disaster Relief Open Maxar data source that I'll link. Many of us are using something like this, our Open Buildings uh, Google uh, footprints that we can get globally anywhere around the world. But when we load these in from that grid, you can see my area of interest is far north of those building footprints. And here I have no building footprints. So what do I do? Well, ArcGIS Pro gives us some tools to be able to try and extract this data from an example like this in the Maxar data set. So we want to grab the Maxar data from before this earthquake that we have here to be able to evaluate. Here, I'm going to go ahead and grab the Maxar data from May 12, 2022 from their open data set. So here are some of those buildings. And we want to run an algorithm across this to try and extract those building footprints. Well, there are some Geo AI tools now in ArcGIS Pro under Imagery AI to extract these features. And these take the image analyst extension to do that. You can see, I'll start right here with the models. There are many pre-trained models that are available. Here's a building footprint extraction Africa model that we're going to use for this example. So I'll, I'll select that one. Now, in order for you to use these tools, you need to download the deep learning ArcGIS libraries from GitHub. And so I'll link uh, that in the description below. Uh, but you need to find your operating system and then click and install these. So now let's go ahead and put our raster in here. And then what we're going to do is name the output prefix. I'll choose uh, Morocco as my output prefix so that the feature class that's created in the geo database of this project will export to that in the contents pane once this processes. So we'll hit run and let this thing run. Uh, it does take a bit of time to run these across the entire image. So here we have the output automatically put into the contents pane. Now what we should do is just see how well this performed. To do that, let's right click here and open up the attribute table uh, for this layer. So as this is loading, we should see a lot of building footprints because there were a lot of buildings, but as we see, there are only seven. Uh, so it did not perform as well as we would hope in this example. So here I'll zoom into the first one. You can see it captured that building footprint, but not any of these other buildings that are definitely buildings uh, in this landscape. And so this is uh, not promising for us. How about number two? Again, uh, looks like an isolated building. Number three, uh, an isolated building again. Number four some sort of structure here, maybe a field. Uh, number five, not sure if that's a structure. What is that? Number six, this has a building and some other buildings around it, it looks like. And number seven, and definitely a building uh, and several buildings that were not uh, extracted uh, with this particular algorithm. So let's adjust some of these parameters uh, here within the extract features using the AI models tool uh, for ArcGIS Pro. Uh, we can do that uh, simply by adjusting uh, the different parameters. We're going to isolate first this area of interest by clicking on the polygon for area of interest. We're going to draw the polygon and then we're going to test in a smaller area just for this example. So here I'm going to draw these locations. Here we go. Okay, so I'm just drawing the area of interest that we want to run instead of running across the entire image itself. All right, double click, set that. Okay, now let's rename the output profile. Uh, let's go with Morocco 2 and run this. Oh, 
Okay, now we can see that the output should be reported into the table of contents here on the left. And there we go. Now, how well did this particular uh, uh, smaller algorithm perform since it didn't run across the entire image? So we'll open up the attribute table uh, for this layer and take a look. And we'll turn that off and open the attribute table. Okay, so it looks like we have no features. So this did not work well with uh, the current parameters. So let's adjust those here under the polygon regularization options. I'm going to change right angles to right angles and diagonals and see how that does in this next iteration. Okay, so I've changed that. I need to change the output profile. I'll turn that off first. And here we go. So we'll update this to Morocco 3. And now close this and we will run this. All right. All right, now we have our output uh, here in the table of contents. Uh, we're going to see Morocco 3. Let's turn off 2 and we'll turn off the extraction. Uh, area of interest and open up the attribute table and see what we get. Looks like we also have a, a big failure here on this particular one as well. So let's try one last uh, regularization method here and that is the any angles option. So we'll select this and we'll use the same area of interest so we'll just turn this back on uh, and here we go. So we'll change this to Morocco 4 that and now we'll run it again and just see how it performs so click run here in the lower right and run this all right so uh, here we have the output of number four and let's take a look at our table of contents and see uh, how well we did by opening up our uh, our attribute table so I'll turn off the Morocco 3 and we'll open up the attribute table right click here and we also have no features that were extracted so uh, kind of disappointing to see like what's the problem here if we take a look at the actual resolution we see the resolution of this maxar imagery is outstanding it's uh, 30 centimeters basically uh, and so the algorithm that uh, Esri is using needs to use a 10 to 40 centimeter output 8-bit uh, unsigned imagery uh, to really excel and it's just not performing the way that we had hoped that it would and so the next process really is to do some training with this imagery uh, in this particular region to be able to extract these and so we'll need to go back into those AI tools and do training we can't just use these uh, auto generated Esri models uh, that uh, we can just turn on unfortunately for this particular example so I still think that probably these AI tools are promising but at this point in this example we've had a lot of failure and I think this is really instructive for my students uh, as I'm building these labs for disaster relief in our geospatial offerings here at Calvin University hope you found this uh, video to be helpful to you as you're thinking about what geo uh, AI tools you might want to use and how uh, this process uh, unfolds within the ArcGIS framework. So thanks.